What's up Home Slice, Lucas here. I got Joey with me today. We are gonna try out three old school training methods that are supposed to enhance your ability to have a bigger lung capacity, enhance your ability to put more power to the ground, be able to run faster, uh, be stronger, increase your endurance. These methods have been used by coaches like in the old good days. Maybe some coaches still use them, but we're gonna test them out. They've been forgotten, forgotten about. We're gonna see if they work. We're gonna tell you what we think of them. And um, yeah, obviously one day isn't gonna be enough to like fully see the results of doing this over and over and over again. But I'm gonna tell you what I think and if I think it will work. And hey, maybe we will see some immediate results. Yeah. Are you down to try these old school training methods yeah, out? Yeah. It's crazy stuff, guys. It's been forgotten about, but what is forgotten about does not mean it is not important. Number one. So apparently nowadays we breathe through our mouths way too much. Back in the day, they knew this. That is why coaches used to make their athletes take a mouthful of water, do a lap around the track, and then spit that full mouthful of water back out. And if they swallowed any, then you know there was some form of punishment. The idea behind this is it would make the athletes breathe through their nose. It would force them to breathe through their nose. Over time, increasing lung capacity, improving diaphragm strength, just better improving breathing techniques when it comes to running, cardiovascular activities, any form of sport really. So we're gonna put this through the test. We're gonna see how hard this is and see how our noses can handle this because I know myself, I am a mouth breather. I'm someone who breathes through my mouth way too much, um, especially nowadays. What about you, dude? Do you breathe through your mouth? Yeah, every now and again. Dude, I feel like I have, I have succumbed to this badly. So the idea is we're gonna do one lap around this, which is about 400 meters, and I'm thinking I wanna keep it at about, what's your mile? We're gonna keep it at our mile pace. What's your, what's your oh, dude, current mile? Dude, it's been a minute. What do you think uh, your current mile is? About six minutes. Okay, six minutes, I'll just say, crap, that's fast. Yeah, so we're gonna try to do one lap, so 400 meters at a minute and 30 seconds, mouthful of water, spit it back out, Enough blabbing. Who's going first, dude? Rock, paper, scissors. Rock, paper, scissors. I got it in my head. Best right. one out of Is one. Is it rock, paper, scissors? Shoot, shoot or rock, yeah. paper, scissors? Shoot, dude. Okay. Best one out of one. Ready? Rock, rock paper, scissors. scissors. Shoot. I knew it. I had I had the rock in my mind, in the mind's eye beforehand. All right. In going, the mind's eye. I'm going eye. first. All right, fine. I'm fine. I'm going first. I'm taking the big one. <laughs> yeah, fine. Fine. Take the big one. All right. So, um, what's the punishment if we swallow any water? There's gotta be a, there's gotta be some form of punishment. I don't know. I mean, corporal punishment was accepted back in the day, but uh, you have to do it again until you make it without without any oh water. Oh my god! You have to do it. You have to do it until you make it. If you don't do it the do first it time, oh. yeah. So if you don't do it the first time, you have to keep doing it until you make it around without swallowing any water. That's the idea. Okay. Jeez. Yeah, I'm gonna mark the bottle right there. Here we go. Chug a log. Mmm. No words, no words were spoken. I failed that one, but honestly, I think I filled my mouth way too full and it was just like straining my mouth. Uh -huh. And then when I brought it back, I like kind of choked on it and I like, coughed it up. Maybe I'm just a, a sissy, but. All right, take two. All right, about right there, you know, give or take. Do I really gotta spit it back in the bottle? Yeah. All right. Let's do this, man. Ready? Mm -hmm. I'm gonna time you. Whenever you're ready, just go, I'll hit it. And he's off. Oh, dang. I don't know if he's on pace or not. You got it, bro, finish up. Oh man, minute, minute and three, minute and four. Oh crap. We'll give it to him if he makes it. We'll give it to him if he makes it. You know what? You got this, man. All right, and done. All right, spit. Hey, wait, you got to spit it back. <laughs> you got to spit that back. <laughs> Oh, dude, he looks like a mess. He looks 
<laughs> oh, dude, <laughs> it evaporated probably. <laughs> it's a little harder. Was that harder than it looked? Yeah, it was breathing, all nose. Breathing through the nose? Yeah. All right, man, I'm gonna take another swing at it. I gotta, I gotta hit this for the subscribers. Yeah, uh, well, you do, you know. How did, so how did it I'm feel? I'm volunteering right now. Yeah. <laughs> you got a minute 42, so pretty close, dude. Pretty yeah. close. All right, take two, guys. Mm. Yep. Mm -hmm. Three, two, one, Let's see, let's see. I think I saw some gulping. I saw some gulping. You get it? I got it, look at that. Oh, you did, you did. Don't worry, I'm still gonna drink all this. Yeah, it's gross, but I'm gonna do it. Did you feel me good? Possibly. The first like 100 meters or so, it was like okay, but then honestly, over there by about 200, it's just like you start you start to want to breathe, you know, like really yeah. bad, right? Is that what you felt? Yeah. And then it's just like you're you're like you want to breathe in your mouth, but if you go for it, you're gonna choke on that water. So I guess that's the point of the whole entire technique is to learn to breathe through your nose better, become less of a mouth breather. But yeah, that was hard trying to hit your mile pace only for one lap. Breathing only through your nose by using the water technique in the mouth. That's number one. Hope you guys enjoyed that. Moving on to number two. Next thing we're gonna try here is we're gonna go into the supplementation realm of the old school athletes with, da -da 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 -da, you might have heard of it before, soda doping. Soda doping. We're gonna be doping some soda over here. <laughs> Without getting too deep into the science, apparently, you know, as you run, your you know lactic acid builds up. Something you can do to help counter this and help increase your endurance and help make you have a better lactate threshold is introduce baking soda as a supplement pre-workout. What? And if you think this is crazy, if you think this is crazy, look at some of the pre-workout supplements. They actually have inside the proprietary blend, sodium bicarbonate, which is baking soda. So in these studies, it's actually been studied, it actually worked. And these studies have shown that the appropriate amount you wanna consume um, to see the benefits, or according to these studies, is 200 to 300 milligrams per kilogram of body weight of baking soda. So just say we're about 180 pounds, that is going to be um, about 16,000 milligrams, I believe. Maybe a little bit more than that. We're just gonna keep it on the low end though. So 16,000 milligrams, I think there is about 7,000 milligrams in like 1.4 teaspoons, something like that. So we'll just say about a tablespoon. We'll yeah. say about a tablespoon yeah, uh, per each of us, just a you know, rough guess. We got some mysterious white powder in this jar here. It's fresh, brand new. <laughs> Don't tell my mom if it's creatine. About a tablespoon. Try guess, guesstimate about a tablespoon there. I'm on the thrash. Oh, there, there you go. Oh, oh man. Oh jeez. Yeah, that's probably good. That's probably yeah, good. Don't, don't overdo it, right? It's probably better to go under than over. Yeah, just for my stomach's sake. Okay, so one thing to keep in mind though is uh, this is like consuming salt, you know? It, once your body breaks this down, it's gonna be sodium and then the bicarbonate, so. Oh, bung. Oh, frick. I may have put a little too much in there. How was it, man? Did you already drink it? Yeah. You downed it? Down the hatch. It's gonna be like salt. But the bicarbonate part is the part that's supposed to help us out here. Mmm. Mm. Yeah, it's salty as heck. Mmm. It's like drinking seawater. Ugh. All right, so while we're waiting for this to kick in, because you're supposed to wait like, well, according to the studies, they waited like 40 to 60 minutes before this kicked in. 
we're gonna move on to number three. Number three. For this one, there is nothing more like demeaning and devastating than starting to just spill water when you're trying to do like a pail run, right? When that water's spilling, you know you're failing. And that's why I think this one is goes down in the old school books of successful exercises, okay? Full water pail run. Or using water pails when it comes to improving your balance, coordination, being able to improve that running form. The idea behind this is if we are running with these pails, even just carrying them to the sides like this, and we're trying not to spill them, it's gonna help us work on our core stability, maintaining a nice straight core, a straight posture, something I struggle with, not doing any of this when you're running, really, really working on that form so that, um, you improve your running form, you can get more power to the ground, you can go faster, you improve your overall athleticism. What we're gonna do is we're gonna do like a 100 meter run, okay? And we're gonna try to keep it at our mile pace. That's gonna be the hardest part without spilling any water. So, gyms are closed, guys. Gyms are closed, but come on, no excuses. Look at this, this, oh, that weighs a lot. Yeah, I told These you. These are probably like 50 pounds each. Let's see if I can make it all the way not spilling. Ready, set, go. Oh, oh man, oh. Oh shoot! Oh shoot! Oh man, yo! It's hard. I'm gonna see if I can squat just it without spilling any water. Yeah. So yeah, we're still about only like an inch and a half away from the top, so I gotta balance this really properly. See, not only are we working on the strength here, like the same strength that you get with weight training, but Guys, we're literally hitting the uh, balance department up and the focusing department up, most importantly. Make a man out of you. There you go. Focus. You gotta focus. Oh, man. Get in on it. Yo. <laughs> I'm doing it. Yo, this is actually, I'm feeling it in the glutes and the hams. Yeah. Yo, no excuses, man. I don't care if the gym's closed. If you wanted to do barbell squats, you just do this. It's, you can even feel it. It's hitting way more in the balance department. Yeah. Plus, you'll be able to bring water to your family, too. Yeah. Karate freaking kid here, guys. All right, the one thing I am missing is, like, I need, like, a log. Woo! It moved. It moved a little bit. I want to go bare feet, because, uh... Oh baby, oh. focusing. Oh. <laughs> oh. I can't believe this is actually working. Oh, 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 oh. That bar is gonna break. <laughs> <laughs> Dang it. <laughs> All right, yo, so for real, using the pail training, the old school technique, man, I honestly don't know if any coaches actually did that, but you know, I'm taking that from like Karate Kid, you know, and like the three ninjas. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Mulan, I think. Mulan, oh, yeah. sure, Mulan, there we go. Don't underestimate that one. That was actually pretty challenging. Uh, yeah, but you don't need to go heavy. Like, that wasn't that heavy. That was probably like 100 pounds at the most total. And, um, you know, doing like a Squat, but the fact that it was unstable made it much harder. That baking soda we consumed had some time to set in, so we're gonna challenge ourselves to something. See if we can beat our old time, the 400. At least I know what that is recently, 64 seconds. What's you, dude? I don't you, know. You haven't written a minute. It, you, was, it was like a 52 back in 08. What? Yeah. 52? I ran track and cross country. I ran track and cross country too. What the heck? I don't know, you know. 52 year old, what? Shoot, what's your best mile time? 426. What the, what? 426, man, dude, you're fast, bro. But still, dude, that's better than my all time PR in the mile. I got 534 as my all time PR. Oh that, that sucks compared to you, dude. You would cream me. Yeah. I was never on varsity. I wish I, I, wish I would've seen you back in, you know, back in your, in your high school You would've days. picked on me, I guarantee yeah. it. You would've, would've been picked. you down yeah. in the race, you know? <laughs> All right, so we're here at the track to test out 400 time against my old 400 time. Did the baking soda help? Yo, we're about to find out. Joey's actually not with me right now because I'm actually doing this uh, about two and a half hours later after we filmed the video. So I'm gonna throw this in, see what happens. <sighs> old time, 64 seconds. Can we beat that?
so I ended up getting 66 seconds, one minute and six seconds, a little slower than my old time. So was it the baking soda? But then again, I was slower. Did it just make me thirsty? I don't know, man. Maybe we waited too long until we tried it. We should have only waited like 30 minutes. It felt like maybe I wasn't getting as locked up as normal, but I don't know. Didn't run fast enough. I feel like I actually recovered faster. Like I actually feel like fine right now. It's only been like three minutes after. Maybe it was just placebo or maybe I'm just excited, but for some reason, last time when I ran the 400 around the 200 meter mark, I was like pretty darn fatigued. As in like I felt my body locking up. I started to feel that here, but it never felt like it got as bad at the 200. And then at the 300, like the last time I was like really locked up and I really slowed down, this time I actually felt like I picked it up at the 300. I don't know, maybe it's because I went slower in the beginning or something like that, that I was able to, that I wasn't able to beat my old time, but I don't know, maybe it felt a little better. Maybe the baking soda worked, but then again, it's been like two and a half hours since we consumed it. Nah. And there you have it. Three old school training methods, hacks that, well, may be beneficial. In all honesty, I think the best one, in my opinion, the biggest takeaway for me was the first one. The water in the mouth, breathing through the nose, one lap around the track at your mile pace. I think that was the most eye-opening for how badly of a mouth breather I've become. And honestly, I bet you that's the one thing that I think a lot of people will say like, wow, maybe I should work on breathing through my nose more. Other than that, I hope you guys enjoyed the other hacks. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Stay tuned, more videos coming out. Don't forget to subscribe. Hope you all have a great day. And I said old school, but hey, these, you know, let me know if any of your coaches, personal trainers, or in, even just you in your own fitness journey have uh, fiddled, ugh, experimented with any of these training techniques that I showed you in this video over the past like year or so. Let me know in the comments, I wanna know. For me, I haven't heard of any of these things in like the longest time, so I would love to know. Thank you all so much for watching this video. Don't forget to subscribe. Hope you all have a great day. Peace. I will see you all in the next video.